This is Map Musings. Today we're going to check out a map of university graduate debt, some more panoramic maps from towns across North America, a data map about toilets in India, and a map with the location of every single soccer team in England. Goal! Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps. You're tuned in to Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. If you live in one of the coastal states, you might be surprised to find your state isn't near the top on this map. That's because this data map is showing us the per capita rate of boat ownership in the United States, as opposed to how many boats are owned by people in each state. This data is according to the U.S. Boat Census. Yes, there's a thing. Now this, of course, is going to be skewed if a state has far less people. So for example, way more people own boats in Washington state as opposed to North Dakota. But because North Dakota is such a tiny state with a small population, the few people who do own boats raise their per capita level up. So even though there are over 260,000 boats owned by people in Washington state, because this map is showing per capita, it is less than the 57,000 boat owners in North Dakota. So data and maps can be totally skewed depending on how you view the data. So this can be a very deceiving map. The state at the top of this list is not the state with the most boats. So according to this map, Minnesota has the most boats per 1,000 people, while Hawaii has the least amount of boats per 1,000 people. Landlocked North and South Dakota rank 6th and 8th respectively. And there was an asterisk next to Washington, and it says that they didn't include motorboats for Washington. So that would definitely increase that state's number of boats. Why didn't they include motorboats? This map shows us India split up by state, and it's telling us what percentage of the population does not have access to toilets at their household. Now, believe it or not, this data is a huge improvement over just even five years ago. But what we can see in certain states of India, upwards in over 50% of the rural population does not have access to a toilet. And how they define toilet is being a hole in the ground, so we're not even talking about a flushing toilet. And even the places that do have a toilet, most of them aren't connected to any modern sewer system, so it's just kinda sloshed out into the environment, city streets, rivers, and eventually into the ocean. This map is actually showing us two different things. It's showing us the share of the population without access to electricity, broken up by country in Africa. So for example, if we look at Mauritania, it tells us that over 75% of the population does not have access to electricity. 75% of that population equals to about 3 million people. If we drop on down to Angola, 50 to 75% of the population does not have access to electricity. So that equals 15 million people. Overall, Central Africa seems to really struggle with electricity here. Though it doesn't discriminate, the places that have the least issues seem to be in Northern Africa and South Africa, I guess we'll say. The two worst appear to be Ethiopia with 70 million and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 60 million people. Jeez, what's with these depressing maps? Well, you can read the title. This tells you how many oofings per 100,000 people in Europe. Things don't look to be going too well over there in Russia. Eastern Europe as a whole is pretty bad for various reasons, and the places in the north, such as Iceland and Sweden, are high because of the weather and depression. This 2019 map shows us the murder rate in Europe. Again, things are pretty bad in Eastern Europe and Russia. This data from 2017 and 2018 shows us the average debt of university graduates in the United States. With the exception of a few states not listed, it would appear that Pennsylvania has the highest average debt by college students. The state with the least college debt? Utah. And as an extra factoid for you, Bingham Young University students in Utah have the lowest amount of debt on average to anyone else in the United States. If you don't think soccer isn't popular in England, look at this map. Look at this map. 
Look at the ridiculous level of soccer teams throughout the country. Even cities have different districts with different soccer teams. That is insane. This is Albany, Georgia in 1885, the seat of Doherty County, as well as the only incorporated city in the entire county. The town's past was heavily tied to plantations, but progress too soon arrived to the Old South. As we can see here, the town has three bridges crossing the Flint River, two of them are for rail. The town had a few grand old buildings downtown it looks like at the time, and a nice assortment of residential buildings around the town. I thought it would be interesting to see the town today and what it looks like compared to this old photo. Here's a nearly exact angle from the panoramic map, but in modern day. As you can see, the downtown has been totally changed. You can also still see the rail, but it's totally changed. And one of the original bridges, it looks like it's being torn down or being replaced, one of the two. Now there's only one rail bridge. The Albany Civic Center and its massive parking lot now takes up a large portion of the riverfront. Here we see Brantford, Ontario in 1875. At the time, the town boasted five schools, six hotels, and 13 churches. And two of the churches were quite unique. Disclaimer, I spent over half an hour trying to find both of these churches on this map, but I couldn't find them, so instead the camera will pan around while I'm talking about them. Enjoy. One of them was called the Primitive Church, today now known as the H.M. Royal Chapel of the Mohawks. You see, Brantford was built pretty much on a Mohawk village, so this church was the church used by the Mohawk people. The other interesting church was the African Church. Brantford had a sizable population of people from the American South who escaped slavery. Brantford was a northern location on the Underground Railroad which saw slaves escape from their southern masters and get freedom in the north. I really like this island here with that building, which is Otto's sheepskin farm, and how the railroad goes across. Also, the construction work of the canal really shows that this town was trying to be in the forefront of trade. Here is roughly the same view today of Brantford, and as you can see, the river has changed course as well as a lot of man-made changes. The island where the sheep farm used to be is no longer there. A lot of the old islands and roads are unrecognizable today, and the town really has changed compared to how it was back in the day. Though in some areas you can see the historic road layout still. This map is showing us the population density of people in Vietnam. The red is within 33 feet of sea level, while the green is above 33 feet. What this map is showing you is that the majority of Vietnam's population lives within 33 feet of sea level. The two main population centers are Hanoi in the north and Ho Chi Minh City, formerly Saigon, in the south. Both of these cities are located along massive river deltas. Hanoi is along the Red River Delta, and Ho Chi Minh City along the Mekong. The reason why so many people live in these river deltas so close to sea level is because they're prime for agriculture. One of the big concerns right now in Vietnam is the damming up of rivers. China has been damming the Red River, and China is also heavily damming the Mekong River, as well as Laos and Cambodia. This means less water is flowing to Vietnam and its agricultural hearts. Here's a cool artistic map of the Navajo Nation, located in Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. Their capital city there is Window Rock, as well as a bunch of landmarks, such as Monument Valley, the cliff dwellings near Kayenta, Navajo Mountain, Lake Powell, and more. It's kind of cool because this map shows us this region in the perspective of the Navajo Nation. This map divides Italy up by its regions and shows us a country name with the equivalent GDP of that region. So the region of Tuscany has a GDP equivalent to Angola. Bing. Sicily has a GDP equivalent to Ethiopia. Bing. Lombardy, the wealthiest region in Italy, has a GDP equivalent to Ireland. While the oh. Piedmont is Ukraine. Mamma mia, that's an interesting map. Now take that idea from the previous map, but let's apply it to Canada. Here are all of Canada's provinces and territories, but shown with a country who has a similar GDP to that province and or territory. So Quebec has a similar economy size to Qatar. Alberta's GDP is similar to that in the size of Sri Lanka, the island and nation. British Columbia has a similar GDP to Finland. And Ontario has a similar GDP to the entire country of Vietnam. Interesting stuff. Well, I think that about does it.
Thanks for watching Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and those were the maps. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We also have a Patreon which you can support. In the future, when we get Patreon supporters, they will be shown here. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Mamma mia! Pizzioso! I'm the best!